Hello everyone, it's Nishant from Career Ride here and in today's video I'm going to take a new topic and the topic is cyber security and network security interview questions and answers for freshers and experienced professionals. So without wasting time, let's come to the concrete stuff now. All right, so let's begin with the first one. What is cryptography? Cryptography is derived from the Greek word called cryptos, which means hidden and graphene meaning to write. Cryptography is the study of techniques to establish a secured communication so that only the person for whom the content is intended can view and process. In short, we can say cryptography is the practice of protecting information in transit from unauthorized interception and tampering. The information cannot be modified in transit between the sender and the receiver. It involves the process of converting a message or a plain text into what is known as ciphertext, where only the intended recipient can convert it back to the original plain text. And cryptography is based on mathematical concepts and a set of rule-based calculations called algorithms. Now coming to the next one, what is cipher and ciphertext? A cipher is an algorithm that scrambles a plain message in order to hide its actual meaning and preventing it from being viewed by those who are not intended to view the message. In short, cipher is an algorithm which is applied to plain text to get ciphertext. And a ciphertext is a scrambled message which doesn't make sense to anybody. And its original message can only be revealed after it is unscrambled by same cipher. Okay, so the next is, what is encryption and decryption? Encryption is the process of converting a message or plain text into a meaningless message that doesn't make any sense. It hides the information's true meaning and this is done to protect privacy of the message from unauthorized access. Now decryption is the process of converting meaningless message back to the original message. It is a reverse process of encryption and is also known as decoding encrypted data. Alright, so coming to the next question. What is symmetric encryption? Symmetric encryption is the method that uses the same cryptographic key for the both process of encryption and decryption. Symmetric encryption is very simple method. Here the message is encrypted with secret key and then both encrypted method and the secret key are sent to the recipient. And this is the major drawback of this method, where if the encrypted method and the secret key are intercepted, a third party has all that is required to decrypt the message. Now name some of the examples of symmetric encryption algorithms. Some of the examples of symmetric encryption algorithms are the digital encryption standard, the triple digit encryption standard algorithm, the International Data Encryption Algorithm and the Advanced Encryption Algorithm. Now coming to the next question, what is public and private key? A public key as name suggests is public and can be known to everyone. The public key is used to encrypt the data. Whereas private key is private and must be kept private at all times. It is secret and it is known only to the user who owns the key. The private key is used to decrypt the data. Now both keys are large prime numbers that are mathematically related to one another. Which means if the public key is used for encryption, the related private key is used for decryption. Now using user's public key, anyone can send a message to him but only the user can decrypt the message using his private key. They are related but not the same. One cannot guess the private key based on the public key. Now let's have an example of how a public key and private key work. If A wants to send an encrypted message to B, he will take B's public key and encrypt his message and send to B. When B receives the message, he will use the private key that is known only to him. 
and decrypt the message and read it. Now let us try to understand what is asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption addresses the drawback of symmetric encryption. It is also known as public key encryption. Asymmetric encryption uses two keys instead of one and we call it public-private key pair. In asymmetric encryption, when a message is encrypted with the public key of the recipient, it can only be decrypted by the private key of the recipient. In this way, even the message was intercepted by a third party, they wouldn't be able to view the message because only the private key of the intended recipient can decrypt it. Now coming to the next question, what is RSA encryption algorithm? RSA is asymmetric encryption algorithm which uses a public-private key pair. It is most common public key algorithm. The RSA is named after those who invented it. In this algorithm, sender and receiver use different keys for encryption and decryption and no need to exchange a secret key separately. We can use RSA algorithm for both public key encryption and digital signatures. Yes, RSA can also be used to sign a message. In RSA, the public key is generated by multiplying two large prime numbers. And the private key is generated through a different process involving same two large prime numbers. A user can then distribute his public key. And anyone wishing to send the user a message would encrypt their message using the public key. Now RSA keys are usually 1024 or 2048 bits in length, making them extremely difficult to factorize. The technical detail of the RSA algorithm relies on the fact that it is easy to generate a large number by multiplying two large numbers, but factorizing that large number back into the original prime number is difficult. For example, if you are told that some number is a product of two large prime numbers, would you be able to find out what those two prime numbers are? It will be incredibly difficult. Alright, so the next is, what are the vulnerabilities of RSA? Even though RSA is considered to be very secured, there are still vulnerabilities that can be exploited by the attackers. That is because some random number generators aren't really that random. A weak random number generator makes it easier for the attackers to factor them and break the encryption. You know the weak key generation happens if the prime numbers are too close and in that case the key can easily be identified. Similarly when one of the numbers making up the private key is too small, it makes easy to discover. Now coming to the next question, what is Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm? Now this algorithm allows the exchange of secret key between two parties communicating over public channel without it being transmitted over the internet. The key itself is never exchanged by the two parties, but based on the publicly shared information, each party can generate their own shared secret key which is identical. Although symmetric key algorithms are quite common and secured, but key exchange is always a problem. The defi hellman algorithm is widely used for key exchange. Coming to the next question, what is cryptographic hash function? A cryptography hash function is an algorithm that takes a random value of any size and produces a fixed size output called a hash value or just hash. Now cryptography hash function has many properties and the first one is a good hash function is one way function or non reversible meaning it is very hard to reconstruct the original value from the hash. Next is a change in even one bit of original value results in a completely different hash. Next is a particular original text or value always generates the same hash value. And it is hard to find two different original values that would result in the same hash. Next is the hash value is totally unpredictable about how they are generated. Now coming to the next one, what are the applications of hashing? 
The two primary applications of hashing are password hashing and integrity verification. Now let's try to understand password hashing. In most applications, passwords are not stored as plain text in the database for security reasons, but are first converted into a hash and is then stored in the database. While logging in when a user type a password, it is first converted into hash and then it is compared with the stored hash in the database. And if they match means the user provided the correct password. Now the next is integrity verification. Hashing is also used to verify the integrity of a document. For example, in order to ensure the file is not corrupt in transit, a user can compare the hash value of both files. And if they are same, then the transfer file is an identical copy. So the next one is, what is salted hash? A salted hash is a way to boost security and reliability of a hash function, where random data is added to the original value or plain text before hashing is done. And this is especially done when we hash password before storing it in a database. Salting a hash with random data can differentiate two identical passwords and eliminate the duplication of passwords. And this can provide additional protection against attackers. Now let us try to understand what is SSJ 256. The secure hashing algorithm 256 is a cryptographic hash function that is most widely used. It is used for cryptographic security and produces irreversible and unique hashes. The 256 in the name represents the size of the final hash value, where irrespective of the size of plain text, the hash value will always be 256 bits. Now, SHA-256 has three properties that make it one of the most secured hashing algorithm. The first one is, it is almost impossible to reconstruct the original value from the hash. For example, a brute force attack on a password hash would need to make approximately 2 to the power 256 guesses, which is extremely big number and almost impossible to do so. Next one is, the chance of having two messages with the same hash value is extremely unlikely. Next is, a minor change in even one bit of original value will result in completely different hash value. Alright, so let's try to understand what is a digital signature. A digital signature is a way to verify the authenticity of the digital resource, such as a message, document, or a software. It is done by mathematical techniques. Digital signatures work by proving that a digital message or document was not modified, intentionally or unintentionally from the time it was signed. Now let us try to understand how a digital signature works. First, the hash of the digital file such as a document is calculated using one of the hashing algorithm. The resulting hash value is then encrypted with a private key. And this encrypted hash is considered as a digital signature. Now the document and the digital signature are then sent to the receiver. And at the receiver end, the receiver decrypts the digital signature using the public key of the sender and gets the hash value of the document calculated by the sender. The receiver then generates their own hash of the receiving document. The two hash values are then compared and if they match, it means that the document is authentic and has not been modified. So the next one is, what is a digital certificate? A digital certificate is issued by a trusted third party known as a certificate authority, which proves the sender's identity and the receiver's identity. A digital certificate contains identification information such as name of the certificate holder, serial number to uniquely identify the certificate, expiration date of the certificate, the public key of the certificate's holder, and the digital signature of the certificate authority. Now let us try to understand why do we need a digital certificate. 
A digital certificate proves that the sender is actually the one that has signed the document and the receiver is actually the intended recipient. It is very important feature of digital signature and is issued by a certificate authority. Now when sending the document and the digital signature to the recipient it is possible that they can be intercepted or the document can be modified. A new digital signature can be created and sent to the recipient. However, with the digital certificate of the original sender, the recipient can actually verify that the received document is tampered since the public in the original sender's certificate cannot decrypt the digital signature that is received. And hence the recipient will come to know that the document has been tampered. Now let us try to understand what is a SSL certificate. SSL that is secure socket layer certificate is a digital certificate used by websites that authenticates a website's identity. It encrypts and secures the website traffic. SSL certificate is issued by a central authority and needs to be installed and activated on the website server. And once it is activated the website can use HTTPS to encrypt and secure all the traffic to and from the website. Businesses and organizations need SSL certificates on their websites to secure online transactions and keep their customers information private and secure. Now let us try to understand how does SSL certificate work. SSL certificate verifies website authenticity and allows the website traffic to be encrypted. Now let us try to understand workflow of an SSL certificate. When we want to access a particular website from a browser, a browser will first ask the website to identify itself. The website then identifies itself by sending a copy of its SSL certificate to the browser. The browser will then check the authenticity of the SSL certificate from the list of certificate authority that the browser trusts. And if the browser trusts the certificate, it creates and encrypts the message using website public key and sends back a symmetric session key. The website then decrypts the session key using its private key and sends back an acknowledgement in order to start encrypted session. Now coming to the last question in this series, why does SSL certificate use a session key along with public private key? A session key is a symmetric key that is used to encrypt and decrypt data during the communication process between the user and the website. The session key is used once during one stretch of time. For example, when a user tries to access the same website at another time, a different session key will be issued. The public-private key pair is used only during the SSL handshake process and all the subsequent communication will be secured using the session key. And this is due to the fact that encrypting and decrypting the website traffic using public-private key pair takes a lot of processing power and therefore a symmetric session key is created and its function is simpler than that of asymmetric keys.